Okay, it's connecting now. Okay, good. It's going to take a minute, I think. It shows that we're connected to Facebook, although I don't see it on Facebook. So you'll have to verify. I'm up on Twitch. Okay, good. Hi, everyone on Twitch. We're getting everybody uh, um, connected right now. So if you're joining us, give us another minute. We're getting there. I think Facebook is a bane of my existence. I see that. I'm working on it. Okay, can you, you can still hear me, right? You can still hear me, right? On Twitch. Okay, great. So audio is still working. Okay, for some reason, Facebook is not wanting to go live. I have everything set correctly. Um, double checking. Let's go here. Let's go back. Facebook shows connected, so uh, ugh. I don't know what to do. Try. I'm saving it again, and it should be pushing right now. No. Okay, so it looks like Facebook is still no good. I'm going to shut down Facebook and I'm going to reboot Facebook. Okay, I'm refreshing Facebook. It's starting to come up. And let's see if it lets me do what I want it to do. Um, and it won't let me have a go live button. Oh, here, go live. Okay, I don't know. I, 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 it, the go live button won't come up. Last time it just sort of came up and it pushed. Um, everybody shows connected, but Facebook doesn't want to connect. So, sorry everyone, it's going to take another minute. Okay, maybe that's what the problem is. Okay, let me go back and try that again. I'll refresh. So you saw the, the red live button, Andy? Okay. Okay, 
it's supposedly pushing, and this is a problem. Okay, let's go back. Do that. Oh my god. Allow. This is killing me. Once again, Facebook has decided not to play. Did everything I was supposed to do. And stream rolls. And it's not doing it. Um, OK, I'm going to try reconnecting one more time. And we go from there, OK? Copy that. And oh, here we go. Got a live button. Yay, finally. OK, we're going to go live there. <laughs> yes. OK, so. Hi everyone, we're finally up and running on Facebook and Twitch. Um, it's a great day, it's Wednesday, it's beautiful outside, the wind is blowing, it's nice and warm, everything is, everything's good. I'm going to go with everything's good. It took an extra minute and I apologize for that. Um, but anyway, Facebook, I know you're la lagging behind just a little bit, but we're here and we are today doing step-by-step okay, -step so live. Hold on a second here. Okay, sorry. Anyway, um, so today is step by step live, and I'm sorry, step by step surprise. So if you're new to the concept, what we started doing two weeks ago is we are, um, you have to order a kit to participate. Uh, none of the instructions are going to be, um, I'm sorry, are available unless you order the kit and it's a surprise so you don't know what you're getting you get a choice of either silver or copper and when you get it you still don't know what you're doing there are some indications of what we might be doing and I'm sure you could have made some assumptions for those who got this one it's step-by-step -step surprise over the top I'm sure you figured out where we're going with this surely isn't a ring and um, nor a pair of earrings right Anyway, so through the next two sessions, we're going to slowly reveal what the project will be. So last week we did this one. Can you see that? So we did the, um, what was this called? Together. Because, you know, we linked things together. Anyway, so then we're going to step it through and let's see if you like this project. It is a little bit harder than last week. And yeah, I don't know. I heard that last week was harder than you thought or harder than I said so but the next one is posted by the way so the next step-by-step -step surprise is called within it is a little it really is easier than this one and it's, it really is I think easier than the first one too but it's a lot of fun and it'll get you there anyway okay so we're gonna start with um, what you sort of got in your kit so you should have gotten some tubing you should have gotten a stone of some sort there was a choice of three colors and you uh, also should have received some wire okay some square wire the, you, you also got a few other things in the kit but you won't need it for today so we're gonna go with that what you need to have today for tools um, by the way everything is going to be in the description in on twitch and on facebook it'll be posted after i'm done going live and um, because of how the systems are i can't post it if you have any questions andy is with me today and he's reading all of the um, comments and he'll relay the, the questions to me and i'll answer them or he'll answer them directly for you um, cannot answer on facebook we can only like we can only, and answer directly afterwards okay so you're going to need a bench block today. One is enough. You don't need two. Um, a pair of heavy-duty cutters is going to be your friend. If you don't have a heavy-duty cutter, you will need a saw. At some point in this project, you will you will need a saw also and some saw blades. I like to use two ot. I consider that a standard, but you can pretty much use anything on this one, okay? And then a... Um, a pair of nylon nose pliers will make your life so much better because it won't mar. These are parallel nylon pliers. I prefer these because they clamp parallel, but you can use some chain nose pliers also. And a fine tip sharpie will be helpful today and a, um, a leather mallet. This is the, the number zero leather mallet. It's a little bit smaller. It's a smaller project, so I like to have that around. 
a file of some sort. A needle file will also work today. Um, and then a ruler is helpful if you want to be exact. If you also, if you have a divider, you can definitely use a divider instead of a ruler. Sometimes that's easier for some people. And then a chasing hammer um, is also needed. Okay, and that's it. Um, any questions, throw it at me later, throw it, as, throw it at me as we go, and um, I will try to get to all the questions. But you guys don't ask too many questions, so I'm sure I will um, be able to follow. <laughs> all right. So again, the, uh, the question was which rawhide it was. It was the number zero rawhide. It's a smaller one, okay? It's about two inches. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull out the stone. And everybody has a slightly different shaped stone with sort of the nature of what it was and also depending on which, um, which uh, stone you picked, it was also slightly different. But we have here a teardrop stone and so first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to eyeball it. So you need to measure the length from top to bottom, okay? So this is approximately, oh just over three quarters of an inch. So it's probably, it's about seven eighths, okay? So about seven eighths, I'm gonna call an inch and I'm going to cut this about a quarter inch longer. But basically what I want it to look like is I want it to look like this, where it's extended above it, okay? And then it'll come down to about the same levelness of it down here. All right, so I'm just gonna cut that there. And you're going to cut this four times. I'm using the heavy duty Kiba cutters, and you can give yourself a little margin if you want, okay? So I'm going to cut this four times, and I'm just going to use the first one as my guide. So you know, I did remember my glasses today. I cleaned it before I sat down. Where did I put it? That's a question. It's sort of funny. I'm sorry, honey. So again, I'm not um, I'm not revealing the size of wire that that I'm having because it's a surprise. You have to order the kit to get all the kit details, right? So that's sort of the point here. Everybody who has the um, oh, by the way, everybody who ordered a kit, you got an email from me last night late with all of the kit details. So you know what size it is. It's in the it's in the instruction sheet. And you didn't get any steps of the instructions also because remember it's a reveal. So after the um, live today, you will get the the first st set of instructions and then next week we'll finish up. Okay, so here I have four pieces like so. You'll need to file the ends to reduce any kind of um, any burrs. So just take out your file and take off those ends because you want it to be smooth. Okay, so if there's any burrs you want to take it off all of them like so. So we'll do that. And yes, I'm actually working in silver today because, you know, I really love, um, I, I like this project. And frankly, it's been in my sketchbook for a year. And I just, I was thinking that maybe we would do it for next year at the shows. But hey, nothing like doing it now in the present, right? What are we waiting for? So one of the things that, um, one of the requests that I have received recently is to do the project that was on the cover of Lapidary Journal last year with the Labradorite and the shell. It's a bit of a complex project. I'm seriously thinking about doing that as a Zoom. So, so far, just about 95% of the projects that you've seen online since we started this 11 weeks ago has been new projects. Um, because, you know, I don't want to take away from the shows and people who've already registered for the shows. So I want it, everything to be fresh and new. And, um, you know, again, I didn't want to take away from the shows. So now I'm starting to expand a little bit into maybe projects from Lapidary Journal. You know, some of those projects were cool enough to be on their cover, so why not put it into a class, right? So here again, I'm just filing all the ends. I have a couple burrs on the ends. And just filing it down just a little bit. Okay, so there. Next thing I'm going to do is 
I'm going to bend this slightly. I want the wire, I want the wire to follow the curve of the um, of the stone. Okay, so I'm going to take out my nylon parallel pliers. Regular nylon pliers will work too, and I'm going to give it a slight bend. You see that? Just gently, just bend it like so. And I'm working slowly here. If your wire is really hard, you can anneal it. Because I just want a, a gentle bend. The thing about square wire when you're working with it too is make sure that you're working on the same plane. So notice the flat plane that I have here remains on top. I'm not torquing or twisting that wire at all. are. And let's see, do I like that? Um, I'm going to bend that a little bit more. I want it to hug a little bit more here. Okay. So I'm taking my time because I don't want to crimp it. I don't want a weird bend that I'm going to have to fix later. See, I, I don't even like that little tiny bit of a bend there. So we'll fix that just a hair, just like so. Okay. So you see it's much more bent now. I'm getting there. So I want this actually to look like a wishbone in the end. It's going to be like a cathedral, okay? Just a little tiny bit more. You can go ahead and put this around something round if you have it. Um, if you have a hoop mandrel, that works too. But I'm just going to do this by hand. The key here was to make it simple enough that everybody can participate. Not a bunch of crazy equipment. That's good. I like that. Okay. So now that I have my first bend, you're going to repeat this for the for the other three. Same bend. Oops. Just like so, working my way through. So I hope everyone's enjoying their week. I mean, the weather here has just been crazy. It was supposed to be storming all week this week. Yay us, it has not. So, been enjoying the weather. All the windows are open here. There's a breeze coming through the house, except right now because just in case you, there's noise outside, we've closed the door for the recording. But um, anyway, okay, so see how I'm working that? Slowly but surely, I'm matching it up. I don't want to do anything so extreme that I have to come back for it, okay? Or that I have to fix it. So pretty close, look at that. That's close enough for me. And again, so what's sort of fun is a step-by-step, -step, quite honestly, I've only made a test piece, but I know it works. I know that the project's good. Everything is as far as the process, fairly straightforward. So I'm actually doing this with you, okay? And I don't know if you noticed, but I did post a final picture of last week's project um, somewhere. I can't remember where, but I posted it somewhere. Woohoo! And if you were doing this with me last week and want an updated instruction sheet with the picture on it instead of just the step-by-step -step logo, send me an email. I'll send you another copy. I thought it was annoying just to send it to everybody because I was thinking that, you know, who wants all the duplicate copies of, um, of projects? But because someone did ask me for a copy with the, the final project in there so that she can print it and keep it in a notebook, I went ahead and did it because it's easy and I had it. So thought I'd offer it up to everybody here also right okay so it's funny over the weekend we were talking about what it is that I'm doing what do we call this a live a show a what so I have decided that these are broadcasts right that's what I'm doing I'm broadcasting I'm teaching you too but you know I'm broadcasting so again notice how I'm just gently and slowly making these bends nothing too severe to make sure that they're all the same. Okay, so this one went too far, look at that. I went too far, so I, you know what, I'm just gonna bend it down just a little bit. Open that up. 
So you know what's interesting about all this non-travel? I have nails. I haven't had nails in years. It's really interesting. Maybe the next time I go to the grocery store, I might just get nail polish. And then you're going to see like different colored nails. Okay, so this guy's a little bit too severe for me too. I'm going to bend him right back out. And make sure that they're similar. Okay, yep, he's good. And, ooh, see I have a little straight edge here. Yes, it's me being a little anal retentive, but I'm working in silver, so I do care. Because this is going to be, a, for me, a final, and I just might wear this. It's a thing. Because, you know, I do love, love, love this stone that I have. Okay, so let's put it up. Let's see how it looks. There it is. Okay, so it's a it's a wishbone, right? Or and as I was looking at it today, it's also like a cathedral, a Gothic cathedral, like one of those old windows. Um, all right, so that's how we're gonna do it. Next up, we're going to go ahead and chase the ends just a little bit, about a quarter inch or so. We're just going to um, flatten the end of this wire. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a graduated taper on the end, as you can see there. I think you can see that, right? So I want it to be really nice and thin. It's a look, and it will contribute to the design here. So approximately a quarter inch of the end there. All right, you're gonna do this to all four pieces. Make sure I have the right end, yep. And notice how when I'm hammering, I'm stroking. I'm not just hitting down at it, I'm stroking it because I really want to have a taper on it, okay? So just like so. It'll splay out a little bit at the end, and that's part of the design too. If you don't like it, you can go ahead and file some of that down. And again, this will be repeated four times. Feel that end and make sure that it doesn't have any sharp edges because if it does have sharp edges, you'll want to take it down, okay? By filing or sanding. You want to do this nice and even. And you want to match it up and see how flat you are. Because you know, this is this is what we call bridge jewelry. It's not costume and it's not fine. It's better than costume, but it, you don't have diamonds on it. And because you know it's bridge jewelry, I like to put a little bit more effort into it. And another thing too is that piece, that stone that you have is not, wasn't so cheap either. So what I'm tapering is I'm topping I'm tapering the top end. Okay. Let's see. I'm tapering the top end. There you go. So it'll go like so. I'm going to do a little bit more here this one. And I want to be as consistent as possible between all the pieces. It'll look better. And let's see this one. Okay. Okay. So if it needs a little bit more filing, just pull out your file and file that down. I would give it a, if there's a still a square edge on the end of that, I would take that off and give it a slight tape, um, slight radius on that just ever so slightly, not too square, because remember you're, you're gonna wear this and you want it to feel good, okay? So there we are, this one needs a little bit more than the other ones for some reason. I'm gonna take a little bit more off there. And because there's so little be taken off, I am not, um, I'm not snipping like I usually do. Usually when I try to, when I create a radius, I usually snip off the corner because it's much easier, but here there's so little that I'm just going to file. That's a tip, by the way. 
I feel like, you know, <laughs> I was um, at the store the other day, I saw a service bell. I was thinking I should get a service bell. <laughs> Every time I do a tip, I should click the t service bell. But then I thought, I'm going to be annoying somebody soon. So no. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to match these pieces up again. Those are good. And those are good. Okay. So we're going to take these two. And look at that. They're going to cross over to create that wishbone. And this should fit right in between like so. If you don't like that shape, you could pull it out a little bit and make it a little bit fatter. But remember, the bigger this is, the bigger the piece. So it's sort of up to you. All right, so now that we have that, we're going to solder this together. Okay, so we'll do the first one. And we're going to go ahead and use hard solder. If you had purchased the copper kit, you're just going to use copper solder. Okay, because remember, it self levels. All right. Place that down and we're just going to put solder right where it crosses over. I'm taking a little bit of solder here and I'll put it on the bottom piece like so. And then this one goes over but because I've moved everything, just to save myself, I am going to put my piece up here and check again. Make sure that I have, give it some birthing room here. Okay. Great. Oh, and I just threw it on the floor. Hey Kim, I see your question on Twitch. Um, we'll address that after I'm done with the project, okay? So I'm gonna heat this whole thing because it's silver and then I'm going to hit it right at the joint like so. And that should have soldered. Be careful not to, be careful not to melt anything. That maybe have soldered, I don't know. I'm a little, it's feeling a little sketchy right now. Let's see, did it solder? Oof. I don't think that's solder. Not enough. We're going to hammer this, so it better be a good joint. So, oh, see, look at that. It didn't. I'm going to put it in pickle, and I'm going to solder the next one anyway. So, I'll throw that in pickle. We'll come back to this one. Okay. So I'm put it right there. Again, second one, same thing, hard solder. If you're doing copper, copper solder. And put this right back on. Make sure that you have a good connection that it's touching. And then I'm going to put the stone here. Make sure it's the right shape. We're good. I also want to make sure that the crisscross on top up here is even. All right, so we'll heat it again. These are really large pieces of wire, so make sure that you heat it, all of it. Get it nice and hot, because remember, to get solder to flow properly, it has to heat. It has to come up to temperature to where the solder flows, okay? There it goes. Heat that bottom piece, there it is. And I keep pulling the heat away because that top piece wants to melt. So every time I see it, it looks like it's wanting to melt or reticulate, I sort of back off and I heat somewhere else. Obviously something else is not getting heated properly. And that one's on. Okay. So I'm not gonna pickle that one quite yet because I need to use it for measurement because we're making two pairs, okay? So it's gotta, um, the, the pieces have to match. So I'm gonna use it as my pattern. Get rid of some tools. Okay, so, so here, I'm gonna put this back down, this one, like so, and put some solder on before I match it up, okay? Yes, you can use a honeycomb board to hold it in place. 
and I'm going to put this right back on top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this over just like this to see if I've matched my shape. Oh, not bad. Okay. Make sure that this fits inside too. Actually, I feel like this top one is, it feels wider. Does it feel wider? Just a little bit? Uh, you know what? I'm just going to pull it out by a millimeter. I know. So anal retensive here. But what did you expect? I don't think you expected anything less. Okay, make sure that this makes a good connection here too. All right. All right. I'm going to put this one in the pickle while this one happens. Again, because it's silver, you want to heat the whole entire thing. Get it nice and hot. And then heat up here at the joint. I did, again, put silver solder on there. It didn't want to do it. I'm helping it along at this point. There it is. I'm pushing it down because I didn't have a good connection. And actually, I'm going to flip it over and see if I can get it to connect better. There we go. There it is. Yep. Okay, I'll show you. You can see the surfaces between the two. I know it's a bit of an optical illusion here on camera, but you can see the surfaces are nice and even. And what I did was I pushed it down with my um, fire tweezers. All right, throw it in the pickle. So remember, if you were working with the wire but you couldn't get it to bend, anneal it. If it's bending for you, so be it. If you screwed up and overbent it and it's not moving, anneal it. Remember, always, and then before you solder, make sure you quench and pickle it, okay? So here's the first piece coming out of the pickle. My pickle is on the side. I'm going to set this here. Okay, so there's my piece, okay? Pull out that bench block again. And now we're going to, I want to flatten this because if you see, if you notice, one of the wires is sitting up. I want to flatten it so it comes down. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is where I'm going to pull out my little baby mallet and I'm going to push it down. It'll just lay better. So that's going to be the back side. And then. do the front one. Yep. Actually, if, just for yucks and giggles. Oh, okay. So I'm going to gently push this one down too. There it is. Okay. So my two pieces match. It makes me happy. Next up, we are going to um, prep another piece here. We will take out the square wire and cut a little tiny um, three millimeter piece, okay? But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and either file or trim this edge because I have a bevel on it. And this one has such a severe bevel that trimming is the best thing to do. And instead of filing because it's going to take forever. And I'm going to file that edge flat just a little bit. And then I'm going to cut about a three millimeter piece, which is just about that big, okay, from there. And again, remember when you're using your cutters, that flat edge is going to face the side that you're, you're keeping. And I'm keeping this side, so I'm, keep, I'm facing the flat edge to the side I am keeping. Keep track of that piece. Don't snip your finger because you're going to need that, a tiny little piece, okay? Okay, so now you need to also sand that side that you just cut because um, you do have a slight bevel on there for this to lay properly and actually look proper. Actually, now that I think about it, there's another way to do this. Ha, I'll show you. But you do want to sand that just a little bit. So I'm just taking out, because the piece is way too small for me to hold, I'm just taking out my chain nose pliers and holding my piece so that I can sand it just a little bit. 
here we go. Okay, so for everybody who's asking about where to get some of this product, in the Twitch feed, Andy has put into the chat the links for the cutters, the parallel cutters, I mean, parallel pliers, and uh, the mallet and so forth. Okay, okay, so I'm just sanding and taking off the edges here, the beveled edges, despite the fact that I have I have a semi-flush cutter. So if your cutters are good, you might not need to do this. You don't want to use the um, your just your basic Lindstrom ultra flush cutter because this is too heavy for it and it will break the blade now if you have the heavy duty ones by all means use that okay so I have a nice square edge on the whole thing I know it's so small I don't even think you can see that it's teeny and I'm going to set it aside and keep track of it okay everybody remind me it's sitting over here I can barely see it alright next up what you want to do is you want to take out your stone and you want to take out the thin gauge wire that was provided for you and you're going to run the wire through your piece and you'll need your sharpie for this one Okay, you're going to run your wire right through there like so and make sure your wire is nice and straight this is sort of important you know what I need to straighten this wire whoops so I'll just run it through here. I'm just going to run it through my nylon nose pliers. Just make sure it's straight because I'm going to use it as a guide and a marker. Okay, so I'm putting it through again. If it doesn't go all the way through, sometimes these stones when they're drilled, they're drilled from both sides so they might go like this. So you might have to work it a little bit. Also teardrops, the tops are really fragile so don't overwork this. Okay. So here I'm going to place it right back into my frame and this will tell me where um, you should mark your, your wires. You know what, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a second here so you can see what I'm doing because I think this is getting a little hard to see. There we go. Okay. So here I'm going to come, I, I like a little bit of space between my, my piece. So I'm going to mark the wire here on right onto the frame on both sides. Oops. Okay, you see that? I'm going to look at the screen here. I think you can see that. So this way you know where to place the next piece without guessing. Alright. So next up, we're going to solder on the tube. Okay, so the tube will get soldered across like so and if you want to you can go ahead and trim it so here I'm just going to eyeball it a little bit mark it and I'm going to go ahead and saw that tube if you have a tube cutting plier that's great if you don't you'll struggle a little bit and you'll just saw this like so if you have a tube cutting plier pull that out put it inside one of the grooves put your marker in between the slit, the opening there. The tube is a little small to be putting there, so I'm actually I actually have it at the top. Be careful not to squeeze so hard that um, be careful not to squeeze so hard that you flatten your tube. Okay, a little off camera. I'm gonna adjust a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, and I do have this on the workbench. You do not want to be holding this out free-handed, and I'm just going to gently stroke the tube. Okay, I'm being told I'm out of frame even though I can see what I'm doing. Okay, let's see there. Hopefully that's helpful. And we're just going to go like so. Okay. So again, if you have a tube cutting plier, it's uh, helpful. If you don't, you can just hold it, okay? So we'll move this back. So, so 
So if you've been following along, you can show support for what I'm doing and perhaps what you like by sharing and liking the posts. That's always helpful. You know, it's all about algorithm. So um, if you could do that, that would be great. So I'm going to go ahead and set my wishbone on here, like so. And then I'm going to set it up so that my tube runs across those two lines that I had had made. I think you can see that right there, right? Just like so. Now, this is my honeycomb block. The tube just wants to roll off. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it in place. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit here. There we go. And a couple more pins. Take out my tweezers and help me out. Okay, so I need to be right about there. So I'm going to put my tweezers, I'm mean, sorry, my pins up. And hopefully it'll hold it in place. I have not put solder on there yet. Okay, I'm just marking things. Like so. Okay. So I have pinned it so that the tube doesn't go sliding down. I actually don't like where I pinned it. And really don't like where I pinned it. Because it keeps going because it keeps going off of my mark. Okay, so there. I know that's where the pins should be. Now I'm going to go to medium solder. And I'm going to place medium solder in three places at this point. You're going to put it on your mark where you just wrote with the sharpie, or where you just marked with the sharpie for the tube. Right here. That's one. And that's two on each side. Okay. And then right at the top right here like so and then we'll put the tube and that little three millimeter piece back on and we're going to solder both of these pieces making three joints at the same time just like so Okay, hopefully you didn't lose that little itty bitty piece. And we're going to put it, whoa! Okay, try that again. Right on top. Okay. And yes, that piece is slightly um, longer than the width of the uh, the tube. And I see that's slightly off, so let's see what I can do about making that nice and even. Delicate procedures here. Alright, so make sure that it does reach all the way across. Make sure you're on your mark. Make sure you have solder on there and that everybody's making contact. I'm going to pull out my um, my solder pick <laughs> just in case somebody decides to go rolling along. Okay, so I'm going to heat this whole entire thing and see my little pillar fell over. Oh, doop. pillar totally fell over. Hold on. It's delicate. Move it back up. This is where the filing and sanding does count. Hands are a little shaky today. I don't know why. Okay. Heat it. Heat the whole thing. And then heat right at the joint. I see the tube is getting hot. So I'm going getting away from it and trying to get that square wire hot here so that the tube doesn't melt. Okay, that's what I'm doing. There we go. Everybody 
everybody soldered all right so and I also was a little leery of heating at the top because it's so much thinner we thinned it out by at least half right so I um I didn't heat up there if you were watching closely because I didn't want to melt those pieces or the, the tops okay now you know it's amazing how did I lose my fire tweezers I was just standing right here all right there's oh crap a third pair I've got the three pairs of fire tweezers while we're standing here talking okay so throw that into the pickle and let that pickle for a second and then we're going to solder the pieces on uh, the top piece on I'm quenching my um, pins because they've gotten hot and I'm just trying to be safe about it okay so if you feel like you're missing out you still can order a kit and then we'll finish the project next week remember all these um, videos are available here on twitch and qtalk if I am actually going live on YouTube it's on YouTube um, if it is not recording on YouTube I'll post a recording later actually today's Wednesday so I'll probably do it tomorrow um, I'm trying to get ahead of that schedule uh, of posting on YouTube but so much going on and I, I see some of you have noticed that uh, last night I did an update on the schedule so the entire June schedule yay, is done um, so all ready for June I know it's, it's a third of June I'm a little behind so um, and I won't post July here give me a week I gotta catch up in all the things that I decided to post but next Monday is this project here it is the saddest pendant and that's minimal metal Monday so remember um, 18 gauge or 16 gauge wire is all you need okay I also last night just posted um, the next zoom or not the next next zoom is the filigree project and as I mentioned on Monday if you were here um, there's going to be a free zoom zoom next Friday on enameling um, head pins and I posted I think I posted that this morning can't remember anyway so see there's my piece it's on and that makes me happy okay Andy's posting the filigree link okay so here this is how it's gonna go you're going to put this piece directly on and you know what um, what's going to happen is I don't know if you can see this but there's there's a taper so it's higher actually I'll pick it up here I think it'll make more sense if I pick it up it's very dimensional this piece right so it should be wider at the top than it is at the bottom it sort of comes together at the bottom there okay just like so but I have made my piece a little bit too big so I'm going to file that down just a little bit it's sitting up too high for me I want less of a gap in between so I'm just going to file that take out a nice student file because they're pretty aggressive and it'll make the work really quick okay if you are interested in the um, free zoom class do reach out to us directly on QTalk on Messenger and we will send you a link to the Zoom class. There's so much going on. I know I feel like I'm throwing so much information at you. Um, I forgot tonight is uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, Wine on Wednesday. <laughs> tonight's wine on Wednesday so we're just hanging out and zooming from the workbench uh, with a glass of wine but I believe tonight it's going to be a cocktail in this girl's hand and a torch maybe but anyway so um, I will be we will be doing that so if you want to join us and kick back and have a few laughs I think we had quite a few laughs last time and I believe that was contributed by a whole bottle of wine that I had but anyway so it was fun um, and if you want to do that and you haven't reached out yet um, reach out to us and I'll send you a link we don't post zoom links publicly because of spamming okay so if you're wondering what happened there or why so this came down just a little bit and 
There we go. Okay. So you see where I'm at? That's what's going on there. Okay. So here, I still feel like I'm a little high though. So let me take this down just a little bit more. I'm going to file that. I know. I'm high, but I haven't smoked anything recently. So don't know how that works. Okay. Filing some more. Just like so. Teeny weeny bit. Okay. So we're getting there. Um, I know I was doing air filings really bad. You really should brace your hand. You should put this on a bench pin. Too lazy to pull out the bench pin right now, but you can do this on a bench pin. And the filing will be a little bit more effective than what I am doing here. So this also depends on how flat you have um, major wires. Okay. But I, I didn't care for the gap. I want it a little bit less of a gap. And we'll put this back on. But that's good. Can you see that? Tiny little piece right there. Okay. And we'll put this back on like so. So what will end up happening here is I'm going to put solder on three joints. I'm going to put solder on that peg that we made and then down on the two legs so that this now becomes a unit, like so. Okay. Um, I'm going to check my shape, make sure that everybody's shaped the same. So I'm slightly off on the shape. So you can see that it's it's a little wonky over here. I'm going to pull that aside, or pull that out, just a hair. Hold on. Ooh. So I just pull that out just a little bit with my nylon nose pliers and then I keep checking my shape I'm, I know I'm off camera I'm slightly to the side here and I'm just putting it over my previous the bottom one okay to the side alrighty okay so much better so you can see okay so we're going to do this again. I'm going to go ahead and use medium solder. We do need to reserve the easy solder because there's still more soldering for next week. But we're going to solder this and then I'll have you do a little finishing on your own. I'll show you how to do it and then we'll for a little homework and then we will work on uh, finishing it next week. So here's some solder on each leg like so but you definitely need to reserve that easy solder, okay? For next week. Trust me on that one, I know. But I think you have figured out where we're going with this, I hope. Well, maybe I hope not, because it's still more fun if it's a surprise. Okay, grabbing some, oh, here it is, some more solder. And again, medium solder or copper solder, and I'm putting it right on the peg, like so. If your piece is sitting on top of the tube, do go ahead and um, put some solder on the ends where the wires are touching it. Mine is not touching, and that's okay. Okay, so I see there's a question. If I solder to the top of the tube, I just answer that question. So <laughs> I know there's a delay. There's a delay. I know. So I'll answer that question one more time. Yes, if you're if the tubes are touching your 14 gate your square wire, do um, put some solder on it. I want a I'm adding a little more solder on the end here because I want to ensure that those pieces are touching. Okay, so here we are. Make sure it's nice and even. It's sort of interesting what the camera can see that I can't see. Okay, so 
because of the angle of the camera, I'm looking at the monitor, the angle of the camera tells me I'm askew, but here, from a different angle, I am not askew, so I'm going with it. I'm going to again pin this in place, just in case it decides to move. This is just insurance for me, because you know, it's a little, it's on a tiny little peg. It's a little precarious. Okay, so I'm gonna heat the whole thing. I'll hit each leg and then I'm going to hit the top, okay? And then I'm going to pray, because <laughs> you know, praying always helps. So heat the whole thing. You gotta make sure the bottom gets hot too. So I'm gonna heat over there at the bottom. Heat it, like so. And then hit the joint. That one soldered. That one soldered and hard to tell on this peg though. Dear Lord, please let it happen without melting the tube. I'm gonna turn that. If you have this solder station, it probably would have been a good thing to put on a solder station. Had I thought of that? Okay, if that didn't solder, I'm putting it on the solder station. The solder, the rotating solder station is what I'm talking about. Okay, give it a second here. Pull the pegs. Ooh, ooh, looks like it did it. All right. Quench on the side, and look at that. Okay. I'm sorry, Andy, what was the question again? I'm pickling, by the way. I determined where the tube was placed, again, by placing a wire through the um, stone and then I used the wire as a marker. Remember, I, if you go back, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes now, if you go back, you'll see it, that I put the stone in between the wishbone and that gave me a marker as to where the tube was, okay? Because you need it to be level with the hole of the, the stone. Okay, set this aside. I'm gonna show you a little bit of finishing and we're gonna finish up and next week, I'll reveal the rest of the steps and we'll finish it and you'll have a finished project next week. Okay, pulling this out of the pickle. Nope, not quite yet. I wanna thank everybody who has shared um, the video so far and all my little posts. It's been really nice, it's helpful. It's interesting that we're finding um, new people from all over the country, all over the world right now. It's very interesting to have that happen. And um, you know, it allows us to keep doing this. At least, I'm hoping, that we get to do this for a bit longer. Anyway, so if you could subscribe to both YouTube and Twitch, that'd be great. If you're on Amazon Prime, okay, so while we're pickling, um, I'll answer that question. If you are on Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to Twitch for free because it comes with your Amazon subscription. So it doesn't cost any more, which is great. And how do you do that? You go to twitchprime.com and you put in your Amazon information, it links the account. You come back to my twitch.tv forward slash qfomgray. That's my channel. And there's a big um, purple subscribe button at the top and that will allow you to subscribe. It's one way to show your support and it's another way for, um, for us to receive some sort of income for doing this. And by the, So uh, the question was, you can't find me. Uh, so Kim, you are a subscriber, so I'll talk to you offline um, about that. But we're showing that you are a subscriber. So you gotta be there. Actually, I'm looking here. I, you, yeah, you're showing as a subscriber, dear. Okay, so here, what I'm going to do is I am going to trim the ends because my end is slightly off. See that? Just a little bit. You can't see that, okay. That's, so I'm gonna just use my heavy duty cutter. These are the Kibas. And so um, I wanna go ahead and file the ends, sand it, make it feel good because you're going to wear it. But like I always say, if you're giving it to somebody you don't like, don't sand it, it's okay. You know, they'll get a hint. But you see, just like so, file it a little bit, take out some sandpaper, 
sand it. If you have marred anything, make sure that you um, sand down any marring, any scratches. Use 400, 500, or 600. If you want a high polish, you always have to work all the way to 600. We'll do polishing next week. We'll do some finishing next week. We'll tell you why you have a tube hanging out in your piece next week. But this is about where you should be. You should have a wishbone frame. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, remember, Wine on Wednesdays tonight, if you need a link do send it to me. Oh, I forgot to mention, I screwed up. I totally screwed up. If the link didn't work, something screwed up, just reach right back out. I'm going to send you a fresh link. I did send a correction to a lot of people who had already registered. I'm so sorry. Um, so I, I'm, I hit a button. I just really hit a button. Um, so anyway, that's my scoop. Oh, I see that there's a question here from Yvonne. If you can't get the wire all the way through the stone because one of the ends not drilled right, what can you do to open the end of the stone? N not this stone. I, typically, I'd say you, you can um, uh, use a bead reamer, but this is a really small stone. Okay, but you know what? I checked every stone before I shipped it out. So try straightening out the wire, maybe cutting the wire at a slight angle, okay? Or coming in from the other end sometimes works too. Um, or go to a, a thinner wire. But I, I checked all of these stones before I shipped them, so I apologize. I don't know what happened. Um, so anyway, hopefully that's helpful. Yvonne, if that doesn't help, send me a note, okay? So that's it for now. I'll see some of you on Zoom uh, tonight. I'll see some of you on Zoom on Friday for the Enamel Beyond. Otherwise, I will see um, the rest of you on Monday, Minimal Metal Monday, and it, it is the saddest pendant, saddest pendant. It's Latin, by the way. I've turned to Latin for names because we're running out of names. and. Um, or, 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 or what is it? Scottish Gaelic. I like that one too. It, it just works really well. But um, anyway, so thanks for hanging out and we will see you all later. Have a great rest of the week. Okay. <laughs>